Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the ProNexus Lease Accounting software demo. We're going to give it about another minute here before we, minute or two before we uh, begin. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, for sound check purposes, please click the raise hand button at the bottom of your screen if you can hear me okay. I'm not seeing any raised hands come up here. Again, if for sound check purposes, please click the raise hand button at the bottom of your screen if you can hear me okay. Yeah, Roth, I'm seeing them. Okay, you can hear it? Okay, and you can yep, see it? I can okay. hear it, and I, and I saw a raised hand come up on my All side. Right. For some reason, I'm not. Thank you. All right, well, great, excellent. By way of introduction, my name is Raphael Vidal. I'm a partner at ProNexus. Uh, with me, I have Dan Hawthorne who's a part of our lease advisory and implementation team. We have our email addresses on this slide, so feel free to jot those down now in the event you'd like to reach out to us individually after the presentation. Uh, before we begin, we do have a few housekeeping items to address. You will be muted for the duration of this presentation, so if you have any questions, please use the Q&A feature at the bottom of the screen. We will answer questions at the end of the session and a recorded version of the webinar will also be sent to all participants. Um, lastly, we will have a few polling questions throughout the presentation. We ask that you take a few seconds to answer those questions as they come through. In terms of the agenda, um, we've got, uh, we're gonna give you a, an overview of ProNexus the firm. We're gonna talk about the ProNexus lease software features and then we're gonna dive right into the lease software demo and then address again some Q&A at the end. Before we begin, we are gonna give you 15 seconds to answer our first uh, polling question. Here we go. Okay, excellent. Thank you. All right, this, uh, this next slide provides you a high level overview of our firm. And to give you a little bit more background, ProNexus was founded by two big four CPAs from PwC and Deloitte and Touche. Uh, the leadership team are either CPAs and or former CFOs and controllers. We operate the firm very much like a CPA firm. However, we only perform non-attest services. We have five core services, which includes consulting work, project work, outsourced accounting services, interim and loan staff services. Additional services include a retained search and NetSuite ERP services. If you'd like to learn more, feel free to visit our website on the home page on the upper right hand corner is a link to our case studies, which really uh, gives you a good idea of how we help clients. In terms of our lease experience for the last two years plus, um, ProNexus has been helping publicly traded companies implement the new lease accounting standard. And then we started with the privately held not-for-profits and governmental entities uh, not too long ago. And uh, along the way, we've developed a significant number of IP and tools to streamline the process as well. 
In addition, we've invested into lease accounting software, which you'll see today to help clients accelerate the implementation. In terms of volume of leases, we've worked with clients that have as low as 20 leases to thousands of leases as well. And before we continue, we're gonna give you another 15 seconds to answer our second polling question right now. Okay, thank you. Okay, before we talk about the software features, as you may have heard, the FASB proposed a uh, delay to comply for another year, which was approved. So for non-public organizations, this will move the requirement to the fiscal year starting after December 15. 2021. And for public nonprofit entities, this moves the requirement to the fiscal years starting after December 15, 2020. Now, even though we've, we have this delay for another year, we have been cautioning our clients that more time won't necessarily lessen the workload uh, that the rules require. And our biggest fear is that if, with this delay, companies will just put off working on this for another year and kind of be in the same position as they were before. Having said that, some of our privately held and not-for-profit clients have already started their implementation projects. There is no penalty to adopt early and we recommend those companies to continue with implementation efforts at a less rigorous pace. For those that have not adopted, at a minimum, we would recommend to get started now with one of two options or maybe even a combination thereof. Option one would be to complete the planning, scoping, and assessment phases of the implementation. This is not a lot of work and it will provide the company visibility to what's ahead while also identifying the high risk areas and planning accordingly to meet the compliance deadlines. Option two would be to purchase lease accounting software, abstract the data elements from existing leases, and upload the data into the software. This will allow companies to maintain the lease data in a central repository, estimate what their day, day one right of use asset calculations may look like, and allow for a quick and seamless implementation when the time comes. This would be no different than having fixed asset software for your fixed assets. The lease accounting software is cost effective and can be purchased through our firm. For example, if you have 10 leases, it wouldn't cost you any more than $1,500 a year uh, for the subscription license. And for that price, this solution is highly recommended over the alternative of using cumbersome Excel spreadsheets. Using Excel to manage the ongoing compliance will be difficult and will increase your risk. In addition, your auditors may have to spend more time on the audit and experience scope creep, which may potentially increase your audit fees. Now, if you hire a firm like Pronexus, uh, we can help you with the implementation. We would use our software to accelerate that implementation. And during the implementation phase, it doesn't cost you anything for the software. Uh, you will have the option to purchase the software from Pronexus for day two compliance and either maintain the data and software yourself. You can have Pronexus maintain the data, any new leases or modifications, and we can prepare their journal require journal entries and footnote disclosures or a combination uh, thereof. So with this software, it's easy for clients and auditors to track, monitor, and modify leases. If you look on the left-hand column on your screen, you'll see the essential features, which uh, uh, it has the uh, compliance with both IFRS and FASB. It's cloud-based, so you have access anytime, anywhere, anytime, and it has error-free amortization schedules and journal entries. If you look on the right-hand column, the innovative features it has includes the automated quantitative footnote disclosures, and it also has wizards for the classification and the lease term. Uh, so with this software, clients realize faster audits with better tools and, and higher realization for audit firms. There are also, it does come with a SOC 2 type 1 and type 2 reports and agreed upon procedures which are available for the auditors as well. Recent uh, innovative feature upgrades to the software include 
a bulk, a bulk lease import template. It does have audit trails for any changes that are made. There's some workflow edits, reviews, and approval process. And it, you can also have access to the embedded lease identifier wizard as well, which is a nice, uh, really nice tool to have. So we, before we start with the demo, we're going to give you 15 seconds to answer our third polling question. Okay, great, thank you. With that, I'm gonna turn it over to Dan to uh, walk us through the demo. Thanks, Raphael. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen, Dan, so you can take over, okay? Okay. Okay, hello, everyone. We're gonna start here at this screen. We have our <clears throat> client name is ProNexus for this demo. And this tool is a cloud-based software. So it can be accessed from anywhere by anybody you give rights to access to. The cost is based on the number of leases, not the number of users. So that being said, as you can see here on the screen, we have ProNexus, we have four companies, and we have 23 leases. So we're going to go into ProNexus, and we're going to go through the administrative tab here first, which is the third tab in light blue. We have My Leases that we will look at, and then there's Add Leases as well. So here, this first administrative tab, we got users, and we have one of our partners in here for the test as a read-only, but the software is very user-friendly, and all you need to do once you have access and purchase the software is put the user's email in, in here for the email. That will be the username, and then you enter the first name, last name, and then you select the roles. We have read only, which is what it says. You can only read what's in, in, in the system. You can't change anything. Users can add information and add leases, and then you have your administrator that can do the back office types um, requirements that need to be done for the software. Then we'll go to policies. So here you have your accounting policies. So we'll walk through these. We can enable firm access to my account. So if you want to enable this, you can set up access to your accounting firm for when you, they're conducting their audit. And then when they're done, you can un enable that and, or unable it. And then they can't have access until you give them access again. The software has a lease term guidance wizard, and you can require that to be done for every lease, or here we have it unchecked, so you can just actually add your term dates and the, and the software will actually calculate how many months or quarters, et cetera, in the lease. There's also a lease wizard classification. So you can classify, go classify it as an operating lease or a finance lease. And the wizard will ask you the five bright line questions to determine that. Or you can have that off and you can just select from the drop down if you already know that it's an existing operating lease or an existing finance lease. This really comes in handy for your leases that you enter into after day one implementation. We haven't suggested that the clients really use that for the existing leases they have at day one because there's a policy election where if you've done your due diligence on your 840, you don't have to go back and reassess those leases, whether they're operating or 
finance leases. And they also, like Raphael had discussed, they added a review tool where you can select the review box here and whoever enters the data when they get to the end, it will require you to send an email to someone other than yourself to approve it and make the lease active. It also has a lease accounting policy documents. As you can see, it has the 842, it has the IFRS 16, and then maybe you may have both. You may have a company that has to report um, standalone under IFRS and then consolidates under GAAP or vice versa. These templates, which I will open one up, this is a sample, have all the policy elections and the practical expediences. And as you can see, there's a list here. You select which one you want, and it's very easy. It already has the description. You check the box whether you're going to select to use that policy or not, and you can add comments to it. And then it will be stored right in here for the auditors to take care of, and it's very um, very efficient because you don't have to write up a sec separate document for your accounting policy elections. Okay, now we'll go to companies. And as you can see, when we looked at the first screen for ProNexus as a user, <clears throat> excuse me, we have set up four different companies. So we set up an IFRS company, a couple of those, and a couple of 842 companies. And again, here, user-friendly, you just hit add, you put in the company name that you want, IFRS 16 or ASC 842, the date of the initial application date, and then local currency and functional currency, if you have a local currency that is not your functional currency, it will do translations for you as well. Then we have customization. So here you can customize these fields here from this screen and we'll see when we go through my leases, you can also do it in the my lease tabs when you enter the information. But again, you can see here that we have asset types land, vehicle, copy machines, computer, et cetera. And again, it's just as easy to add, hit the add button, type in the asset name and save it. Or you can click on the X and delete it if you change your mind and want something different. The journal entries also allow you to do expense allocations so you can set up your cost centers. And again, it's just as easy to hit the add button and add the cost center you want. Custom fields, same thing. We have in here for this demo, lease owner, discount rates, and a test field. And here's where you add your lessors. So you can list all your lessors here. GL accounts. So this is out of the box, the GL accounts that they have set up in the system. So they have all the different accounts. They have for IFRS leasing, they have operating leases, finance leases, variable expenses, GL revisions for your write-offs, <clears throat> for revisions to the P&L and transfer for balance sheet if, you have, if you've um, decided to, to take a renewal that you didn't do at the initial time of the lease. And here's um, the previous 840 balances that can be written off. And this can also be edited where you can click on the pencil and change the asset, change the GL description name to match your general ledger. You can do the same thing for your GL account numbers. And as you can see here, we did one and we have about 32 characters in there. So. They tell me it's unlimited, but I tested it with 32, so I don't think that anybody's gonna have a GL account longer than 32 um, digits or characters. And you can also here, you can see where you can add additional GL accounts if you so choose to. And you can change that by company. As you can see the drop down. we can do it for the different companies that we have.
And then here we have the currency tab where you select by year and you can enter in all your currencies month by month and it will automatically calculate your FX. So now we'll go to my leases. So in my leases, we're going to go through some leases that we've already created for time saving purposes. So we'll start at the top here where you can add custom views. So right now we're going to look at the Pittsford view and it's going to list the ones that I put in the Pittsford view. And you can, um, so we're going to look at all again, and this is all the leases we have. You can show rows of 10, 25, 50, 75, 100, or all. And then you would go through and you would select, if you wanted to set up a report, you would select the ones you want, type in the name you want to call it, and then save the custom view. Or you can, and then you can also do a search. So I can also go by company name and then search and it will come up with those related to the company ProNexus LLC. We also have it by location. You can search classification, asset type, lease end date, and lease status, whether it's complete, under review, it's deleted, or it's incomplete. So we're gonna go back here to <clears throat> Pittsburgh, and we're gonna look at this training demo lease to start with. Now we're not gonna go through the ad leases because this is basically a blank format where you would add the information, but editing the lease will show us the same screens that you would see if you would add a lease. So as you can see here, we have description and term, lease payments and classifications, GL accounts, variable expense, and non-lease payments. And it also has a tab where you can attach all of your lease documentation pertaining to that lease. So that can be stored in one location and you'll know where it is and people, you won't have to go search for this, for these leases anymore because that's one of the, um, one of the big chores that some of the larger companies had to go through was actually able to find where all those hard copy leases were or electronic copies, especially if you were, were a Fortune 500 company and you were um, located worldwide. <coughs> Excuse me. So here's the company. So we, you can see that we had the companies in here. So here's our companies. So if we were entering a lease, we'd pick the company and again, Here's that ad screen that we saw in the administrative tab. So you can do it here. And the currency is USD. And whatever your currency is, you can add that in here. If it is something different than when you set up the company with um, the local currency and the functional currency being different and you put in the local currency as let's say British pounds, it will ask you for an FX rate, exchange rate at that day of implementation and you can enter it in here. Lease name. So this is the lease name. This is, um, can take as many characters as you want. So you can develop your own um, description for your lease names. We have a lot of, a lot of our entities have uh, gone with any kind of identification to the general ledger by company code and what that lease may have been called. We have a lot of real estate leases that since they've been called with it, um, been called in the past by probably address location. We've put that in there and then put RE for real estate and then numbered them accordingly. Or have added the number if they've already been numbered. So here's a spot for description. We have a corporate office and a professional office building with an area of approximately 10,000 feet usable usable square feet, et cetera, et cetera. And if you have non real estate leases, here's a 
field for the manufacturer. And here's our asset type and here's the list that we had on our administrative tab. And again, you just add the asset type here if you wanna add something new. There's a field for square footage. Here's a location. And as you can see, it's as easy as you enter the location name, country, address, zip code, city, and state. And here's where we have the lessors. And again, you can just add the lessor here. We saw that before <clears throat> on the administrative tab. So here's, these are screened out because we went through the term wizard. So as you can see, this is 1119 to 123128, 120 months gets filled in there. We have here 120 months and we'll walk through the lease term wizard. So this will ask you, is the commencement date, the end date below, should it be on the first page of the section? So you have the start date and the end date. We got the 120 months. And then are we gonna have an, an early termination? Are you reasonably certain you will bypass any early termination? We said yes, but if you think you're gonna take a term in, uh, early termination, you can say no, it will ask you for the termination date and will update your lease record accordingly. Or it has the same thing for renewal. So you're certainly cert are you reasonably certain you will bypass the early termination? And we said no, or exercise, excuse me. And that will change your dates. So we stayed the same. We have a comment box. We put the renewal terms in the comment box here. You can put as much as you want. Here's where you can add the custom fields that we saw in the administrative tab. And we have the loaner is JJ Lease, discount rate for and test demo. You'd save your changes. And then we would go to the next tab. This is where you would add your lease payments and your classification. So we have a discount rate of 4%. The incentives and the initial direct cost are clouded out because as of the initial application date, these, these amounts are not used. These would only be used for new leases going forward after the implementation date and would adjust your ROU asset accordingly. So here you have payment streams. You can do monthly, quarterly, or annually. And if you've noticed these question marks throughout, you click on these question marks and it will give you some background. It will give you some background of how to or actually what the fields kind of consist of and what you should, what information those fields want you to have. Okay, and here's where we've added the payment streams. So you can see we have three different payment streams, number of payments vary, payment start date, payment end date, and you can easily fill that out. You can delete these or you can add another one. And 100, for an example, 12 months. We're gonna say 1119, it will automatically fill in your end date, your last payment to be made on that payment stream. And here's where the existing balance is as of day one. So you would write off all of your deferred, accrued, or prepaid 840 balances on your balance sheet, and they would then be calculated and adjust your, your asset under 842. And as you can see, we have deferred prepaid rent of $5,000, and it has a variety of different accounts here that you can select from. 
And here, again, this is blocked out because we have gone through the wizard and we said this was an operating lease. If this, we hadn't used the classification wizard, this would be a drop down for operating lease or finance lease. So if we open up the classification, you can see well ownership transfer, we're gonna exercise a purchase option, no alternative use to the lessor, and these are your basic questions you had to determine whether you had an operating lease or a finance lease under 840. It also has, it asks you about 75% of the economic life where you can click on this and you can put in the information pertaining to that lease and it will automatically calculate the percentage. And it will do the same thing for the fair value. And as you can see, we got 8.25 here after putting in our 7 million. Okay, so we're gonna finish that up. We're gonna save these changes. And GL account. So here's our GL, GL account setup. As you can see, here's the accounts that it pertains to. We can add our cost centers here for the operating lease expense. And we can see we've done real estate and demo at 50% 50, 50 a piece. And as you know, this system will generate the journal entry based on your GL accounts and your GL description that you have set up in the administrative tab if you so choose to change those. So we'll save that. And then we got the variable lease expense and non-lease payments. So here it gives you an option of what GL account you wanna hit. If you wanna do a cost center and do an allocation, you can. And again, just like the lease payments, you can enter the payment streams for your non-lease payments or your variable expenses. And here we're saying CAM is a minimum of $1,000 a month and will be adjusted each at the end of each year and trued up. And um, we selected the policy election that we're not going to separate lease and non-lease components, but this would be a variable lease payment. So it's not included in the ROU calculation. And you can add again, as many streams as you want. So you could add your taxes, your insurance and everything, and it could come up through here as well as your variable lease payments or your CAM. All right, we're gonna save that. And then we're gonna go to attached documents. So here, just as simple as you select the upload, you choose a file, put comments in there and upload it. And it will show up here on your list. Okay, so we're gonna go back to my leases. And we're gonna look at the Pittsford leases. And we're gonna walk through, walk through the remeasurement test. It's usually not this slow, I have to say, there it goes. So here, here you can see that here's the revision start date. So we had that a lease that started 1119 and we revised it at 10119. So the revision will begin on 10119. The old lease will be frozen. The old ROU asset liability will be frozen at 930. The comments, term extended one year, and this will give you all your lease data. And as you can see, this was 99 months. So it added a 12 months onto the lease, less the, the nine that 
was already expired. And here's all your discount rates. Here's your payment streams. Here's your GL accounts. There was no variable payments in this and we do have a document in this one. So go back to my leases. Okay. Then we're gonna look at the review test that we have. So this has all of the information in here like we walked through before, except you can see now there is a review tab. So once you get complete all, this, all these tabs prior to the review tab, this is where you would add an email address in. We have Mike in here, add, and then we would submit it for review and Mike would automatically get an email saying, go in and look at this lease and review it and approve it and it will become active. Okay, so now let's look at the reporting tools. So you have a selection of local currency, functional currency, or reporting currency translation. So I can, these are self-explanatory. We're gonna do the local currency. This is just USD. Functional currency is USD as well. So we're gonna pick the start date, January 2019. And we're gonna say, let's do it for a year to December 19. So first we're gonna look at all lease data. So this report shows you what the filter criteria was. So you know what, what, what you included. And here is all the individual field information for this lease that we ran the report on. So as you can see, it has asset type, size, location, lessor name, discount, etc. with all of the payment, with all of the fields that we entered into the lease in the system, for the lease into the system. Now, that report is included on all three of these other reports as well. So you can, so we'll run a journal entry report. And as you can see, we'll kind of go back to here. So here's the criteria that we saw in that lease data report. And then here's that lease data report included in the journal entry. And here we have the journal entry. We can see the ROU asset being, being set up for the initial day for day one. And it's broken down by month. So we have our deferred rent that we wrote off the $5,000 in the prepaid. And has our long, lease liability, rent expense, ROU asset adjustments, long-term, short-term, and our variable rent expense. And as you can see, we ran it for a year, so he has it broken up by line by month. Okay, and then we'll show you the amortization schedule. And here's your amortization schedule. Hey Dan, I'm not I'm not seeing the schedules. All right, I must be having technical difficulty. Can you see it now? Yes. Okay. All right. So again, here is the amortization table. As you can see, we have the lease criteria. Here's all the fields for the lease that we included in the report. Here's the criteria we ran the report on. 
Here's the data. This is the actual amortization table that the journal entries are created from. And as you can see, we have, you know, the expense, straight line expense. We have our beginning asset balance. We have the end of month asset balance. We have our beginning liability. We have our interest payments. We have our liability, cash payments, and short-term, long-term. Here's the cash that went out the door. Here's the cash for the lease payment. Here's the cash for the variable expense. And AP, if it's paid in the middle of a month, it would be on there. And here's your total cash paid, variable lease expense, and your balance sheet account that we wrote off the $5,000 for. All right, so I apologize. So let's run through this journal entry report again real quick. And here's the journal entry that's generated from the amortization table. And like I said, here's the posting of the asset, for example, by month, we got all 12 months and by line item and amount. And here's the footnote, which is very handy. This is exactly, just about exactly what came out of the ASC 842 regulations. And as you can see, we have our finance, lease expense, the amortization, and the interest, operating lease expense, short-term lease expense, variable lease expense, sublease income, and there's your total. Here's our, uh, here's our cash flows for our finance lease, operating finance lease, our finance lease, the financing piece of the cash flow for the principal portion. There's the operating cash flow for operations and what the exchange was for the new lease that we added on and also will do the weighted average of all your leases for the remaining terms and also the average discount rate for your leases. And uh, it also puts out your maturity analysis for your payments going forward for the next five years and thereafter and the less your present value. Okay, now let's go back up here. You can also run an audit trail for your auditors or for any time you wanna see who's been in the system and who's been making some changes. Now this does take a little bit longer because it's kind of big from all the demos that we've done. So there's, there's the changes that we made from before, showing me right now and click through all the way to the end, but you see we have like 314 pages and then you can export this to Excel too. Okay. I think that about covers it, Raphael. I don't know if we've got any questions that came through. Yeah, there's a couple. Do you want to stop sharing your screen and I'll, unless you, yeah, and I can put up the uh, Q and A page. Okay. There you go. See here. Okay. Um, all right. So we got a couple questions here, Dan. Um, first one is what types of security levels are available in the system? Yeah, well, let me let me review that again. We have a, a read only, which only gives access for individuals to go in there and look at the information that's in there. They have no, they can make no changes. We have a user and the user can add or edit leases. And now with the review function, you can set that up and it can't be approved so you would know about it. 
And then we also have the administrator, which would have full access to the system and can add and delete users and companies, for example. Okay. And then uh, we get one other question that came through here. Um, let's see. Could you provide more detail as to the SOC 2 type 1 and agreed upon procedures? Yeah, yes, I can. So right now they've added a SOC type 2 or a SOC 2 type 2 report as well. So the SOC 2 type 2 report is the audit of software system design and operation effectiveness and controls relevant to the security, where the SOC type one report is the audit of the software system's design of its controls relevant to security and processing integrity. They also have an agreed upon procedure report that they had an independent auditor do where the auditor actually, the auditors actually put in their own data, ran their numbers in their system, ran the numbers through the least crunch system, and they were within a dollar of each other for all the calculations. So those are available too. They've also added a separate website for getting started with um, kind of taped webinars and question and answers, and these reports are attached to it too, which would come with the purchase of the software as well. Okay, great. Thanks, Dan. I uh, appreciate everyone sending in their questions today. Hopefully this was insightful for you. And again, feel free to reach out to us uh, afterwards if you have any additional questions that come to mind or if you'd like some support in terms of uh, getting you on track with uh, the compliance of this new standard. As you can see on the screen, we do have another upcoming webinar in August, Monday, August 17th. And on that webinar, we'll be discussing how to actually implement and maintain the new lease standard uh, as well. So feel free to sign up for that webinar and uh, have a wonderful day. And again, thanks for joining us today. Thank you, everyone.